Welcome to another video from XF Motorsports. This is going to be part 3 of Project 630 SL in which, uh, well in part 1 we took an old Mercedes SL and we took it apart completely. Uh, then in part 2 we took a C63 and we took the engine, all the wiring, everything out of that. And uh, now in this part we're going to be taking the engine from the C63 and uh, trying to put it in this old car which of course is going to be a little more difficult than uh, well, we thought it would be. But uh, we're doing quite a lot of cutting and welding on the subframe to make the engine fit on it and actually well Sebastian is doing most of the fabrication work on it so uh, he's going to explain how we're going to make this engine fit in this car. Yeah, so uh, to make this engine fit into this car we have to modify the subframe so that means we have to cut out, cut the subframe and then modify the engine mounts, brackets, so the engine can sit on the subframe and then we're going to have to try to put this, the whole thing in the car and mount the transmission on and hopefully it will work. Yeah, so there's quite a lot of work to do for this one, quite a lot of cutting and welding involved. So uh, let's start off by showing you guys what we've done so far and then yeah, get into making all this work. So since the last video, Sebastian started off by taking some more of the SL apart. He took the fenders, the headlights, pretty much everything on the front of the car. And after that we decided to do the first test fit, trying to fit the C63 engine in the SL and uh, finding out where the problems were and what we needed to cut out in order to make things work. Here's how the engine looks like after trying to put it in the car for the first time and of course well there's quite a few things that we'll have to cut out of the way before we can actually uh, fit it in for the final time so one obvious thing is all the steering stuff is right underneath the oil pan so that obviously needs to go but luckily that was something that we were removing anyways but um, what's not so lucky is that the subframe also needs to be cut by quite a bit the engine mounts with the brackets we'll need to modify i think we'll be able to keep the engine mounts that uh, came with this car originally but the uh, brackets don't line up with them so of course we need to move those for the radiators we'll need to cut the frame make it a little wider because um, it does need to be about five centimeters wider to fit all the radiators in. So after that we started off by removing the steering system and the bolts were actually so badly seized that fire would actually come out of them every time you would untorque them. Some parts of the steering system were of course part of the chassis so we had to cut them away. And after that it was time to start a whole lot more cutting on the subframe, basically cutting away everything that needed to be cut away to make this engine fit on its proper height in the chassis. But of course after quite a lot of cutting we realized that this task was not going to be that easy uh, so what we decided to do was uh, Sebastian then removed the entire front subframe from the car and we decided to just put the engine on the subframe itself and first make it line up on the subframe properly and then bother with moving on to the chassis and actually cutting away the chassis as well and uh, making the engine fit in the chassis. So after cutting quite a lot more of the subframe away, now we are finally, well, just about to get somewhere. Um, we have managed to make the engine sit almost on its, at its proper height. So like uh, the oil pan, the lowest part of the engine is almost at the lowest part of the subframe, which is the way, well, the engine is supposed to sit. And uh, over here, uh, we have, so we still have a little bit of a problem because the alternator is almost touching the engine mount, well, subframe mount, which shouldn't be the case, of course. And it's also really close to over here and on the other side 
things are also really tight with the air conditioner compressor. It's hitting this part of the subframe, so this part we will have to cut away. Um, but other than that, over here we will have enough space. Well, after we are done with relocating some of these air conditioner hoses, we will have enough space that this side will be able to go in. But on the other side, we'll need to remove the alternator. We'll need to do a bit of modification over here to get the alternator as close to the engine as possible because there is a little bit of a gap over there that we can uh, play around with. So we'll pretty much have to yeah, bring the alternator um, almost a centimeter closer to the engine and then hopefully it will clear everything over here. For the headers, of course, we will need to modify these as well because yeah, there's definitely no way these are gonna work so because yeah, right now it's just pointing straight towards the subframe so we'll need to cut these. Uh, on the other side, of course, things are even worse because, yeah, there's no way this is going to work. So that's something else we'll need to modify a bit later. So after that, it was time to remove the alternator, put it in the CNC machine and cut it away as much as possible to bring it closer to the engine so that um, it would clear everything. After I was done with cutting the alternator, I had to do the same thing with the air conditioner compressor to also bring that closer to the engine so that everything would clear the subframe. So after a million attempts of trying to fit this engine on the subframe, we have finally been able to, well, make things fit. Well, the trick to actually making this fit uh, within the space was that we actually had to grind the alternator away. We had to get it closer to the engine and same with the air conditioner uh, compressor. We had to get it closer to the engine by as much as we could. So now there's, yeah, luckily Mercedes did leave a little bit of clearance between um, these parts like the air conditioner and the engine. Now that gap is like pretty much gone completely because we've brought all these parts so close together and of course we had to do that otherwise there was not a chance that this engine would, would have fitted on the subframe. So after that it was back to Sebastian and some more hand fabrication for making the engine mount brackets so that we could actually mount the engine at this location on the subframe. Once the engine mount brackets were somewhat made and strong enough to basically hold everything together, we decided to actually put everything back in the car and make sure that the engine was actually lining up in the car uh, the way it was supposed to. We're putting the engine back in, the subframe had to go back in the car first, and then the engine actually had to go in from on top of the car, not underneath like most newer cars, because um, the chassis on this car was so tight there was no way that we could actually fit the engine in from underneath. Here's a look at the engine after it's finally in the car, sitting on its proper height and everything. And uh, yeah, you can see how much cutting and stuff we've had to do to fit everything in. And uh, well, right now the engine is uh, tipped forwards a bit because of course when the transmission mount is gonna be installed, that's when it's gonna be uh, sitting properly like this way. Um, right now, yeah, it's uh, because of the weight of the engine, it's tipped forwards, but everything else is uh, looking pretty okay. Um, we have to make a steering rack right now that is gonna, well, mount somewhere over here in between the engine and transmission because there's a bit of a gap there where um, things are slightly higher and that's pretty much the only place where we can uh, place the power steering rack. The difficult thing though is going to be, well in the next video, when we have to make customize the exhaust manifolds because we have to make the exhaust manifolds go down from this tiny part between the transmission and the engine and in the same part there has to be a steering shaft that is going to come in from here, mount somewhere on the power steering rack depending on, on where that lines up and then also line up with the um, tie rod ends in a way that everything is in its proper geometry and it works properly. We do have to modify the suspension a little bit still, which is why we didn't finish up on the subframe right now. We didn't start welding it because um, yeah, the control arm, lower control arm needs to be mounted like much further that way so that it can like achieve its proper geometry to avoid any bump steer. So there's quite a bit of yeah cutting and welding still left to do on the suspension. Um, other than that, uh, 
Here's how the um, air conditioner and the alternator sit. They're really close right now, almost touching. There's a bit of cutting we have to do on the chassis now to move things a little bit further away so that uh, they have their proper clearance so that when the engine actually moves on the engine mounts, they don't hit. But uh, we absolutely had to machine them and like bring them closer. Otherwise, it, it was, would have been impossible to like make all this fit. Um, other than that, yeah, here's how things look like on the front. Uh, we do have enough space for all the radiators to go in, but of course we need to widen the chassis from here for them to fit because those radiators are much wider than what the chassis is right now but so far looking good uh, let me just lower the car show you guys what everything looks like from the top here's a look at everything from the top when the engine is sitting at its proper height and everything and uh, yeah it sits pretty well now it's low enough that the hood will close nothing will yeah hit anything and uh, the best thing is the transmission lines almost perfectly with the transmission tunnel over there so hopefully we wouldn't have to do too much cutting there so this is how far we're gonna get for this video well uh, the engine is <laughs> in the car finally but uh, not properly of course we still need to take it out one more time we need to weld up the engine mount brackets properly we need to finish all the welding on the subframe but uh, we're not gonna finish uh, we're not gonna uh, we're, we still have some more cutting left to do on the subframe because uh, right now the next step is that we need to put the steering rack in place and we need to see how all the ball joints and everything line up on the suspension and depending on that we still need to cut up the suspension a little bit change the geometry around so that we can make it work with the new steering rack in a way that there's not gonna be any bumps here and at the same time we're gonna be changing the suspension geometry a bit so that it's a little more aggressive it feels more like uh, the suspension geometry on the c63 so basically yeah to make the car feel like exactly like the c63 and after that we're gonna be yeah, taking the engine out and welding everything together and uh, well but the good thing so far is that uh, the engine does sit at its proper place we have finally managed to put it in a place where we have enough space at the front of the engine that all the radiators can fit in uh, we have enough space on the top that the hood can close properly and of course the transmission is nicely going to line up with the transmission tunnel so that all that can work so um, that's pretty good of course but uh, still quite a lot more work left to actually uh, make all this function and everything but uh, well also in the next video let's see if we have time we might also get started on the steering system because uh, we have to do a right hand drive conversion on this car we need to make uh, basically move the steering wheel from that position to this position the person uh, has already uh, sent us a dash he's in England actually and this car is actually going to England after it's done so of course we uh, need to bring all the pedals, all the steering wheel, everything to this side. And uh, of course, after that, after all the mechanical things are done, then we're going to be getting on to the electronics, fitting all the electronics from the C63 into this one, seeing how many features and everything we can get working. And um, I'm pretty excited about this one. I think it is going to be a pretty cool car once everything is done. But of course, it's going to need quite a lot of work to get there. So yeah, we're going to keep working on it. Right now, we're going to take a bit of a break from it because there are quite a few more cars that we need to work on before we can free up the lift again and get this car back on the lift. There's this Infiniti Q50 that uh, was here uh, a while back. We changed an engine on it and after that now it's just here for a few general repairs. Uh, the power steering pump needs to be replaced, the brakes needed to be replaced. So. Um, this one hopefully is going to be done pretty soon, but after that there's this car that we need to well, remove the engine and transmission and quite a few things on. It's a Bentley Continental GT, but not in the best condition right now. Um, it was in a bit of a front collision and uh, quite a few things got broken on it that we well, need to fix up. And yeah, other than that also on the F1 project there's quite a few things that you guys are going to be seeing coming up so that we can start putting that engine together. and test it out then so yeah quite a few cool things actually coming up in the next few weeks definitely stay tuned this is going to be everything for now thanks for watching see you in the next one